Um, hello, everybody. Um, as John mentioned, I am Ellie. Um, I am one of David's PhD students. Um, and today I've been asked to sort of um, take you through the exercise guidelines, um, how to start exercise if, you, if you're not exercising currently, and then also how to progress with your exercise, uh, making sure that you're hitting the right intensities. And then after that, I'm going to take you through what we're currently doing uh, within the um, exercise intervention, the study that we've got going on right now. So you guys have got a little bit more of information about that too. So to start off with, um, here are the guidelines. So David's already uh, touched upon these briefly. Um, and the current guidelines uh, for those um, living with and beyond uh, cancer is to firstly avoid, avoid inactivity. So avoid sitting on the sofa for long periods of time, try and keep moving um, throughout the day. Then it's the exercise part. So at least 150 to 300 minutes of moderate aerobic exercise uh, per week, which equates to around 30 to 60 minutes um, a day, five times a week, or um, vigorous aerobic exercise. So around about 75 to 150 minutes per week of, of vigorous intensity exercise. And this equates to around 30 to um, 30 minutes, three times a week or six times a week. And then as well as that, um, we, well, the, rec uh, the recommendations are to do resistance training as well, two times per week, focusing on um, the major muscle groups that we have in our body, which are your legs, um, your back and your chest. And David's already mentioned um, how exercise can help um, with those uh, quality of life um, factors. Um, but as David has already mentioned, these are based off um, solid tumours. There's not much information about that and how exercise affects those with CLL, but uh, this is why we're here. Um, David and um, his team and myself, we should be able to answer these for you um, soon. But a key question that um, is constantly asked and where people don't really um, understand these guidelines is what is moderate intensity activity and what is vigorous intensity activity? So I've got a little slide here for you. Um, David's already mentioned um, the RPE scale, and this is a rate of perceived exertion scale. So this is a way of quantifying how hard someone is finding the exercise at that point in time. Moderate activity is around 11 to 14 on this um, 6 to 20 scale, um, and vigorous is around 15 to um, 18. However, again, this is very subjective. Um, so I've given you a little bit more information on how these um, intensities should feel. Moderate activity is when your breathing is getting deeper. So while you're exercising, you're, you're, being, you're aware of your breath, but it is still comfortable and you should be able to hold a conversation. So a common example that I will use is if someone gives you a ring during um, this period of exercising, you should be able to pick it up and you should be able to have a conversation with them on the phone while you are exercising. But the person at the end of the phone should be able to guess or know that you are exercising because your uh, breathing is deeper. So that's a good way of understanding that what moderate intensity activity is. Um, however, again, like I've mentioned, it's very subjective. So I do have these heart rate reserves um, and uh, percentage of heart rate reserves and percentage of heart rate max, uh, which you can use um, as a indication of moderate activity if you do have the capability to um, record your heart rate using a smartwatch or um, something else. Vigorous activity is uh, when you're breathing hard, you're breathing forceful, and you do not want to be picking up that phone. Um, you won't be able to hold a conversation, a uh, couple of words before you have to take a deep breath in. And then you've got your heart rate reserves and your percentage of heart rate max as well, if you have the capability to record your heart rate. I could give you some examples, um, which is uh, what some websites do give if you ask to search moderate and vigorous um, activity online, but it's so relative to each individual and where you are within your fitness journey. 
So getting into exercise, it's a very daunting place. Um, exercise, starting it, um, it's very, yeah, it's very daunting um, in terms of knowing where to start and how, how, to, how to progress. The first thing you need to do is choose a goal. Um, that is specific and measurable. And again, this is relative to each individual. Um, so it's not, I just want to get fitter. It's a specific goal. So I want to walk or run a 3K without stopping. I want to walk up the stairs or walk up this particular hill in my local village without stopping. I want to walk 18 goals, uh, 18 holes of golf. Um, I want to be able to run around the park with my grandchildren, or I want to be strong enough to deal with therapy when it arrives. Having those specific and measurable goals um, will provide the motivation for you to carry on exercising. And it also en enables you to plan, um, plan um, how you're going to pro progress with your exercise. And I'll go on to that next. So, a key terminology um, that is used um, within exercise is what's called progressive overload. And this is something that um, is where a lot of people make the mistake when exercising. It is um, progressive overload often involves a goal, which we've, we've already um, identified that is specific and measurable. But we're going to start off slightly below that goal at a level that is comfortable but challenging. Then, as we find that that gets easier, we are going to increase um, the frequency, intensity, duration or repeti uh, repetitions of that training um, to keep um, creating adaptations and um, uh, positive adaptations to achieve that goal. So an example would be, that 3k let's take that 3k um uh goal so wanting to walk 3k without stopping an individual might find that uh walking around the block um in their local village is comfortable but challenging and they may decide that they have the capacity to do that three times a week the next week they may do that four times a week the week after five times and so on here we are increasing the frequency per week. When that individual feels comfortable, they may end up doing two times around the block, three times a week, three, four times a week, five times a week. Then they might bump it up to three, et cetera. You should get the, get the idea. Before that individual knows it, they are walking 3K around that block without stopping. And that's an example of progressive overload. And it's very key within, within exercise um, so that you can keep moving towards that goal and getting fitter and stronger. Where individuals tend to go wrong is that they will decide that they want to start exercising, they'll get onto a bike and they'll just pedal for 30 minutes but not at the right intensity. They're not working at that intensity where they're feeling their, their breath and they're feeling their heart rate increase. They're feeling hot and sweaty. So it's good to be aware of that and it's good to be able to understand when to progress. So progressing with um, your time on the bike, for example, that intensity on the bike, may be that you're finding a certain level on your bike um, getting easier. So you might bump up the level. So you maintain in that, um, maintain that intensity. A common um, question that I get asked um, is what shall I do when getting back into exercise after a cold or illness? And again, we're gonna use, gonna go back into this progressive overload. Um, my recommendation is to start at a lower intensity than you were before. So whether that be lower RPE or lower heart rate. And then over time, we're gonna again, progressively overload ourselves back up to where we were before we got um, that cold or that illness and then go further um, and carry on progressing on our fitness journey but it all depends on how you're feeling so learn to listen and learn to listen to your body what you may have been able to do um, 
probably may take you know weeks to get back up to that point so be patient with yourself listen to your body um but you will you will get back up to that point again progressive overload is re relative to each individual some people may progress very quickly through their exercise journey some people may take um, a little bit longer and everybody has a different starting uh, starting point but if you do progressive overload correctly, then you potentially will be able to go from doing exercise on, on a chair, doing chair exercise, um, which is a great form of exercise for those that um, don't feel comfortable or can't get up and move around the house uh, much, to lifting little, little weights um, and progressing with those weights um, until we get to this um, image on on the right there where we can do press ups and over the course of um, months and um, potentially years um, you will get fitter and stronger and you will see those benefits the key thing is to be mindful that it doesn't happen overnight um, it is uh, can be quite slow but having that target that goal to um, motivate you is key and then understanding and um, being able to progress um, suitably to achieve that goal is also key. So having a plan is, is really important. Then what do we do um, currently in our, um, in our study? So if you decide to be in the remote part of the study, which is um, the, where you do the exercise part in the comfort of your own home or in the gym, we will ask you to come in to do pre-intervention assessments um, at the university so that we can get an understanding of your health and how physically fit you are. We will do um, resting ECGs. Um, we will look at your body composition. We will look at your resting metabolic rate, which is a, um, a test of how many calories you burn at complete rest. We then do some functional fitness assessments. So this is looking at how, um, how well you move. Then we do um, some cardiopulmonary exercise stress test on you, which is a key assessment. Um, and this looks at your peak fitness, um, gives us an indication of how fit you are, that peak fitness marker, as well as some submaximal markers as well. And it also gives us your um, peak heart rate. We then do some strength testing as well of both your maximal strength and your um, uh, muscular endurance as well. Uh, maximal strength and muscular endurance. Um, and then we do some dietary analysis and questionnaires as well. You then go into the 12 week intervention at home or in your local gym, and then you come back in to do those assessments again. The aerobic training part um, consists of high intensity interval training. So this is a period of um, high intensity followed by a period of active recovery. So you can see in week one there, we have 30 seconds of high intensity training followed by 90 seconds of active recovery. And we do that 10 times. So it equates to around um, 20 minutes of actually interval training with a five minute warm up and a five minute cool down. And we do this at 80 to 90% of your heart rate reserve. So going back to David's slides, we are very, we are using heart rate reserve, which is a individualized fitness marker. Um, so no matter how fit you are, um, we will um, work you at an intensity that's relative to you and your ability. Then over the course of the weeks, we progressively overload you. So you see in week two, we increase that in, uh, high intensity interval and we decrease the rest. Week three, we do the same. And then when we get to week six, we actually increase the intensity. So this is a more complicated way of progressively overloading. And then week nine, we get to um, 90 seconds of high intensity interval training followed by 60 seconds of rest. And this is just a standardized, um, standardized protocol. It may change depending on your fitness ability. We may keep some people um, in, in week one for longer and in week two for longer. And um, we've had some people that we've 
progress straight through very quickly um, because they are super fit. Um, but again, we adapt this to each individual as every individual is different. To um, monitor your heart rate, we actually give you one of these um, smart watches. Um, so you are responsible of making sure that you're working in the right intensity if you are um, at your, um, if you're working from home. Then um, we also um, give you your program through a app um, or if you're not so um, technically savvy, then we can also do this via email. We then also do, so we do the aerobic training three times a week. Um, and then we do um, resistance training on two of those training days. So we do resistance training twice a week. The res resistance training um, exercises target your leg, your back and chest muscles. So targeting those three major muscle groups. Um, but that's, we give the exercises um, or we program the exercises um, depending again on your capability. So we may give body weighted exercises or we may give resistance um, bands to you to add a little bit more resistance into those exercises. We look to do a warm up and then we do um, two working sets with a target of 20 repetitions. The 20 repetitions is a target. so. Um, First time you do it, you may only achieve 17 um, repetitions, but that's fine. The next week, you may achieve 18. The week after, 19. The week after that, 20. When you achieve 20 repetitions of both sets, we know that your muscles have adapted so that they're finding that particular exercise intensity okay. So it means that we now need to bump up the resistance and um, bump up the exercise intensity so that we can progress you and carry on creating those adaptations. Similarly, in the um, aerobic training, we do that naturally with the heart rate reserve. As, as, your, as you start finding the exercise easier, the um, you might have to bump up that resistance on your bike or bump up the speed on your treadmill or bump up how quickly you're, you're walking so that you get your heart rate within those zones. And again, another example of progressive overload. Then what do you do in the supervised side of it? Pretty much exactly the same. So the protocol is exactly the same. The only thing that is different is that you come into the university three times a week and you are trained by myself and the team. And like David said, we are the ones that are pressing the buttons and making it harder, making sure you're working at the right intensity. The only thing that's slightly different is that you don't have to um, fiddle around with an app um, and you get a slightly different watch. Um, same same software from the same brand, um, just ever so slightly different. And so, yeah, the main thing that's different is that you come in to do the study. Here are, I'm just going to finish um, with a couple of quotes that I've um, actually gathered from um, some of the participants that have gone through the trial, just to emphasize um, how um, exercise can change your your life um, and also how quickly it can take an effect if done properly. You see the top one here, I didn't get puffy at all and the, the couple uh, that we were walking with were amazed as I always used to struggle with hills and that was some climb so I'm well chuffed with myself. So this person here used to struggle with walking up a hill, they're now longer struggling. Um, and that was only halfway through our exercise intervention. So already within six weeks, we're seeing a difference. Um, someone who went through the whole intervention, some feedback was, I'm on a constant high from endorphins. We've got someone in the study right now who's on week five, and he's... Um, now understands what they mean by the exercise bug. Um, so he's constantly asking us questions and he's someone that never ever exercised before. Um, and then finally, I know it's doing me good. I have triceps now, I'm definitely going to carry on. So the key things, the key point is I um, would like you to take away from this part of the, um, the talk is 
um, how to work at the correct intensity. So knowing what moderate intensity activity is, knowing what vigorous intensity activity is. It's difficult if you don't have a way to record that, but listening into your body, knowing um, you, how deep your breathing is, whether you can hold a conversation or not, is more than enough at the moment. But the, the key thing is that exercise is challenging. So you shouldn't be finding it easy. Um, and if you're not finding it easy, then you'll know you're working hard enough. And then finally, it's progressive overload, understanding what that means and how to progress forward with that. So as you're finding the exercise easier, making sure you're getting back into that intensity by increasing the resistance on your bike or walking faster on your walk. And then also same with your um, with getting with getting stronger. If you're doing um, standing up and down from from a chair um, and you're doing that five times every day and now you find it really easy, bump it up to seven times every day um, so that you can carry on um, adapting those muscles, adapting that heart and um, your lungs so you can get fitter and stronger um, for for your goal um, that you've set. And thank you.